Hey guys, Strat Gamer here. Welcome to my very first video on my very first YouTube channel. <laughs> so today I got a idea and decided to start a YouTube channel, doing what I love, playing strategy games. So I'm sure the audio is going to be horrible and the cuts are going to have be amateur, but hey, it's my first go and I figured I'd give it a shot. So bear with me. If you didn't gather from the thumbnail and the title, uh, I wanted to give a look at this uh, little indie game called Occupy Mars and give it my best attempt at a quick tutorial. It's a survival strategy game that's uh, like pre-early access-ish. It was actually released last month and um, during the Steam Game Festival, supposedly the uh, prequel or kind of intro version is uh, coming out this month. So um, I'm going to go ahead and let the, uh, the intro here finish playing and then we'll uh, jump right in. So we come to the regular page here, as you can see, um, typical start page. Can't click on anything uh, other than start the demo. So that's what we're going to get going on. Go ahead and give that start. Um, gives you a nice little uh, background on the demo here. Alrighty. So I'm going to leave tutorials on so that we can kind of go through those real quick. <clears throat> uh, basic needs, alright, standard stuff, uh, you got your health stats, you got a monitor, um, this middle one was very important for me, uh, there's a little closet that has uh, some oxygen and water, you want to grab that. <clears throat> um, this end one is a little bit farther on, when we get into the base you can kind of see what, um, what you can do with that, uh, we'll go ahead and hit the next one, basic movement, uh, standard uh, ASDF kind of movement. Um, it also notes that you can actually get water directly from the well. Again, we'll get to that later. Uh, you can refill your oxygen from bottles using a scrubber device. That's in the base a little bit later. And then again, trying to reinforce that uh, that shelf there. Then this is the WDASDF. Uh, v is actually important. What it doesn't tell you is you can actually switch to third person view when you're driving the rover which is very helpful when you're trying to pick up rocks with a crane tab um, also opens your map your menu that kind of stuff also pauses the game which it doesn't tell you it's kind of nice so I'll go ahead and throw this out there uh, this demo if you're actually trying to play the demo hopefully the game will be at least in early access and you'll have a little bit more time but this demo uh, only last 45 minutes of gameplay so keep that in mind all right so now we're uh, we're in the rover here uh, you press escape uh, it'll get you out of the seat here you can kind of look around very small kind of realistic to what we would imagine an actual Mars rover would be uh, I'll go ahead and hop back in we're going to hit V to go to third portion, and uh, as of right now, the um, zoom out is reversed. Let's actually scroll up on the mouse wheel. Slightly irritating. Uh, but the first mission, uh, as you can see here in the bottom right, is to collect the rock. Uh, so we want to use the crane to collect the rock. So we've got a waypoint over there. I'm going to go ahead and head on over. Physics is a little bit weird so far. Gives you another tutorial. Press tab, WSDF, drop rocks by holding shift. So uh, we're going to do this real quick. Um, so 
Here's an interesting thing that I found. Um, so you got two control panels here in the cockpit. It won't let me actually switch all the way over, but somewhere it tells you press tab and uh, you'll switch over to the crane operating. Now you can actually press tab from while from outside in third person view as well. So now when you use WDS, WASDF, it moves the crane. This one's also tricky if you remember the controls. It's hold down the space bar and then WASD does different things. So I'm holding out space bar right now and uh, re retracting the train a little bit. I'm gonna let go, go down, open. This is a bit tedious to get used to. All right, we're there, we're gonna close it, pick up this rock, put it in here. Um, it's actually interesting with the falling mechanic it's got going on here. Shift, to open it back up, and it will go in. All right, so we got our next uh, waypoint here. Again, tab, switch back to driving. And you can see we got to test out the grinder. So we have another waypoint. So we're going to go ahead and drive over there. <coughs> Excuse me. Got another uh, tutorial that comes up here. Basically pretty easy. Hop out, open up your grinder, which I'll show you, and uh, scrap this part here. So now we're out. Hit V, switch view. Go back to the door, pop out, and number pad five, we're going to go ahead and scrap this thing. Let's see, it's picking up screws. You'll notice too, the outside of the panel there is kind of frosting over. Uh, at the top, it says the temperature outside is 56 degrees. Um, I think it's pretty much like that, the whole tutorial. Also, right mouse button I found cancels almost everything, so press right mouse button, it puts that away. We can go ahead and close that out. Hop back in the seat, switch to third person, and go to the next tutorial. I mean, uh, waypoint, sorry. So I'll pull to the right of this rock, we want to mine rocks. So if it wasn't totally obvious that rock is a little bit too big for this crane so again we're gonna get out this time we're gonna press 3 to pull up our mining tool and break apart this rock so we can pick it up with the crane now this takes a minute so we'll wait on it here more we're going to pick up some rocks alrighty I think I picked up enough rocks I'm going to actually um, hit this transport mode button which kind of puts away the crane for me it's pretty neat and I can go ahead and start driving while it's working there it's gonna put the crane in the or the claw in that little side part and kind of fold up the arm there <clears throat> the next waypoint was uh, to unload. So you'll get this little tutorial. It says uh, park it in the right spot and then hit unload. And once you're done, you'll see a whole bunch of stuff in here, which is kind of misleading because it doesn't tell you you have to actually power the shredder here, which is this entire structure I'm driving up on. So, um,. Right at about the point where it looks like it fits, gives you the uh, next tutorial here for um, powering the shredder. So we'll go ahead and do that. Pull up just a little bit more, pop out, press escape. Before I get out of here, I'm going to get into this uh, cupboard, which is what I mentioned before. I'm just going to go ahead and pick up all these bottles. They all stack in your inventory, and then we don't have to keep running back for them. And again, tab will pause the game. So if I click on inventory, then I see you know water and oxygen that's sitting there. As you can see, the hydration is getting kind of low anyway, so I might have to pick that up. And don't worry about saving the bottles too much because again, this demo mission is not that long. So I should get one more tutorial up there. It is um, regarding. 
cable management. Uh, basically, if you unplug one of the sides, you can left click and hold on the end and it'll wrap the cable and unplug it from the other side for you. So if we follow the cable that's actually already been plugged into the shredder, you will see that it runs all the way over here. And that's weird, I got the same tutorial twice into this device. This device is a battery and that one is basically a glorified splitter. I think it calls it a energy control unit. Uh, it calls it something else too. Transformer. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, so in this one it's got 21 kilowatts of power going in and it's got 94 power uh, kilowatts stored. Um, problem is, and I should have showed you this before I walked away, but the shredder says that it requires 25. For some reason in this game it makes you determine what you want the power out to be. Since I know that the shredder requires 25, I'm going to put 25 there. Now it's powered, it's done. Now it's actually going to start discharging because it doesn't have enough power going in. So again we can follow this cable if we want to fix that. And that cable is plugged into the number two slot here. So you can follow this. You see the battery in the number two slot. We want to keep going up on this until it gets above 25. So 25.2, we're good. You also saw that message that said I'm thirsty. So I'll go ahead and take a sip of water. Um, you can left click on it and consume. Or what I prefer is just right click on it and it drinks it. See my hydration is now full. <clears throat> Go ahead and head up here. Back to my powered on shredder. And if I take a look at it, hey, we got power. It doesn't have that big red thing. Also on my display panel over here, now I can click unload. And does a kind of cool animation here back here. Stepping that rock into the shredder. Alrighty. Should finish here in just a moment. And give us a new task. There we go. So we want to print parts required to build the battery device. Now, also, too, if you didn't notice, um, kind of click on the screen and it focuses it for you. Uh, but if I scroll all the way down, there's a battery pack. I really think that is what it calls the battery device. It's not word for word, but uh, it completes the quest. So go ahead and add it. Give you a notification about building. And it's going to start printing it. As you see there, the progress bars on each one of those four components are going. And if you take a look right here, it's got a nifty little 3D printer. <coughs> Excuse me. Go ahead and let that finish. Got just a couple more parts. All right, now that that's finished, we can go ahead and go to the inventory. These are the four parts. You can either click and drag these over or use the arrow just to grab all of them. Now, another one of the quests uh, is actually to get 200 units of iron. And it's very hard to see right here, but there are actually 283 units of iron. For some reason, left clicking and split, I cannot get to work. So I'm just going to drag the whole thing over. All right, now we've got iron and the battery device. It wants me to go ahead and build the battery device, so I'll come back to the um, iron in just a moment. All right. So I'll go ahead and stand here. Tab. Build. Electricity. Battery pack. There we go. Now, I thought I saw a video on actually how to rotate this thing, but uh, I cannot figure out how to do it to save my life. Now, it kind of goes facing you, so like the screen, like that part of the battery pack is kind of whatever direction is closest to you, so I'm going to go ahead and put that right here. Uh, bolt the blowtorch, which is number two, and just go ahead and build it. 
Alrighty. Now it's giving me the task I've got to complete before the sandstorm. So I'm going to go ahead and put away this blowtorch. I'm actually going to take this cable and it is coming from that switcher right there and plug it into this battery. Then I'm going to grab another cable here, stick it in six so that I can use it. Put six over here, and then I'm just going to chain these batteries together. Because uh, one battery is not quite enough to last the night, which we only get one night before the sandstorm hits. At least to the best of my ability, my knowledge. <coughs> so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of the available power and just put it into this battery. And I'm also going to make one more solar panel because we actually have the equipment for it so that I can get max power. Try and put it here close to the other one. Try and satisfy my OCD and line it up a little bit. Good enough. Go ahead and build up, bring up the torch that guy together right. I'm gonna unplug this little guy and put him in over here and go ahead and deal with my oxygen issue full oxygen now 100% that's got 95 uh, kilowatts uh, for an output so <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to also output 95 my assumption is that once the other battery fills up it'll start filling up this one too and so far that's worked now I'll show you when we hop in the base how to get this information but for right now I know that the base doesn't normally go over 30 kilowatts so I'm gonna put that at 30 kilowatts it's getting 54 in right now for whatever reason even though we set the other one at 95 I'm not really sure why um, I know that it that might be what its max capacity is that is what its max capacity is. so it can't output more than right here what it says it can't output more than what it actually has charged so for the time being it's gonna output 54 I assume that the rest of this power in is actually going to charging it so it'll slowly ramp up to 95 and then this will um, only output 30 ever um, which will charge up the battery so I um, want to take care of a couple of these tasks over here so what I'm going to do actually is power up the Shredder. Ah, actually, I need to take this out and put it in one of these holes. Let's just give it power directly. And then I'm going to take this cable, which, if you can follow it, actually goes to the hab over there. So I want the hab to be on the battery. Uh, I don't really care about the shredder that much, it just means that it won't work at night. So we're going to go ahead and plug it in. I like the mechanic of the cable too. It kind of, when it lands on the ground, it kind of glues. So you can kind of like snake it if you want. It's kind of a kind of a neat mechanic there. So then the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn the ramp on. You can see it's plugged into here. Up, back up to 25 so that it's on. So one of our tasks is actually to power all the buildings. So. There it goes. Alright, so we have now powered all of the buildings. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go hop up into the rover. One of the tasks, well, I'm going to take care of three tasks here real quick. So, one of the tasks is to put 200 iron in this container over here. Pretty simple. And it doesn't even have to stay there. So, we'll click here, we'll go there, complete the task. Notice that little drum thing, and I'll take it right back in my inventory. Yeah. 
And just in case we have time, I'm going to go ahead and put... You know, so switch this from the printer container to the shredder containment. I'm going to go ahead and put this ore back in there just in case. Hop back in here. Close the door. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the map. And we actually got to find a uh, tablet. And normally... It's right there on that question mark. So if I double click on that question mark, it creates a waypoint. So I can now see that waypoint on the map. I'm going to hop in here. Don't need to unload anymore. Switch to multi view. I'm going to go ahead and hop over there and get that, uh, get that tablet real quick. This is where the physics get a little weird. I don't know if it's. The trailer, it's actually trying to fight, but it's like the front tires on this thing have zero traction. <laughs> Excuse me. Alrighty, and we're here. I did test, you can actually scrap those pieces in this uh, whole thing if you'd like, but that takes forever. I'm going to go ahead and pick up that tablet, complete that task. I have no, ta <laughs> no idea what the tablet actually does. And we'll hop back in. I'm going to go ahead and drive back to the base. I'm actually going to park near the... Um, I'm not going to go back up on the shredder because there's no need. I don't have any other rocks or anything. Um... I'm going to plug it in kind of next to the uh, power wall. Uh, I'm going to park it next to the, the keep forgetting the name of the device, the splitter type deal, and um, plug in the rover. Um, the task actually in here says that you need to charge the rover, but uh, I guess it doesn't mean fully charge it, it just means plug it in. Um, of course, the plug for the rover is actually on the opposite side. So we'll go ahead and hop out. Go ahead and use this last available port here. Press 6, grab a new cable. It's pretty neat too that the cable in your inventory automatically um, doles out the cable. So you don't necessarily have to have like 15 different cables of different lengths. You just have one cable and it keeps subtracting from the uh, overall length of the cable so the plug is actually on the opposite side you can see here it looks like it's got an oxygen plug and a regular power plug um, so far in this demo we haven't done anything with oxygen cables um, while I'm out here um, I gotta do one more thing actually we gotta give that power and I plug that into number one we should see it on here too rover yeah we'll just get that one percent there and now that we've completed all that, we'll just change the hab back to 100%. So it's getting the full charge. Did that say negative one? Well, that's interesting. We can suck power out of it. <laughs> yeah, all right. Whatever, we're going with it. So this um, ox water pump, um, obviously it was already here. Um, I'll explain that warning message in a second. It's 18 o'clock, 6 o'clock, so at 7 o'clock uh, the temperature drops and I guess you'll freeze if you stay out too long. But this device is actually solar, um, so it charges itself, it seems to last all night. Um, however, it has a plug. Um, you don't even need the plug though. As you can see, I, I'm not diverting any power to it, it charges itself. I guess if you wanted to power it maybe through a long sandstorm or something and had a battery hooked up to it, it would uh, do that. Uh, I think it takes about 5 kilowatts if I remember correctly. Ran it out one time. Uh, so this is a water hose. It's plugged in the hab right now, but it's pretty neat if you uh, unplug it there. It kind of spews around like it's actually shooting out water uh, for just a couple of seconds and then it, it stops. But you can actually charge your chute here. So you see my hydration is maybe at 30% click on it and it'll go ahead and fill you back up instead of using a water bottle but 
unfortunately we don't have that much gameplay time to even really care so I'll go ahead and plug that back in so that we can do the last task on here which is to grow potatoes now um, if I had tried to enter the hab before I gave it power um, these doors would not open automatically however you can use these levers right here to uh, open the doors manually if there's no power but since I do have power the lights are on the doors open automatically and we can go to the next step so growing food uh, use a C tool to plant incubators manage the incubators and watch the plants grow um, all right so i'm gonna go ahead and hit this first uh, you notice when you walk in any building your rover or the hab you have an interior o2 obviously that is very low um i've got enough power just because i knew how much it was to turn this on but to me this is a really weird oxygen uh, setup um, basically there's four adjustments you can make to this uh, which is kind of what the tutorial here uh, explains um, that knob these two levers and that knob um, all right I'm hungry let me go ahead and eat that so I don't have die um, again I'm just gonna right click on this five times it should give me a good amount of food um, now <clears throat> From what I've been able to tell, um, if you open this up, you can see here, you've got a whole bunch of stats here, right? So you got oxygen, temperature, this is not the temperature inside, which I thought at first. It's actually the temperature, I guess, of the device. You don't want the device to overheat. If it goes over 100 and you start it, uh, I don't know, it'll explode or something. Haven't done it. And then how much power it needs. Um, I imagine these two knobs only have two different positions. Uh, on off it, it doesn't really matter I think as far as I can tell the little turny things have three positions so I found a combination that I see, think works pretty well so if I turn this twice and again you can only do this when the actual oxygen machine is off so make sure that's off and then I turn that knob once obviously just change position of it and then turn this one time you'll notice up here should change to around 12 oxygen sure the last time it was 12 but whatever okay so I'm gonna go ahead and hit start and nothing happens and that actually is what it's supposed to do I'm tired I need sleep so if you look down at the interior O2 it's still red um, it's actually going up it's just you have to fill up I guess this gigantic building and it just doesn't go up very fast uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop these open um, and you know I'm actually gonna turn this off the first night because I don't think we have enough battery to last running that thing all night I'm gonna pop open the incubator um, you notice option number four is actually the potato gun seed magazine which is weird because we have two of them um, I think they're both the same thing maybe because they look the same this one just has a magazine I'm not sure really but if I hit four opens that guy up I can actually just hold down the uh, one more tutorial <laughs> shows what's going on here yep put it in the incubator first and then move it over to the other one so if I hold down the left button it just like fires the seeds out and we'll go ahead and plant everything but fortunately it doesn't fire it unless there's actually a plan there so last thing we'll do here is we'll go to the incubator you see that it requires 0.7 on the electricity so we'll again not sure why this is necessary but we'll go ahead and change that to 0.7 change this one to 2 and it's now supplying it so you can see that I don't know if opening or closing this makes a difference but I close it because it makes me feel better and we're gonna go ahead and take a nap in the rover again because I don't have the oxygen turned on and it probably won't let me go to sleep I'm very curious if you can actually use your um, spacesuit oxygen when you're inside but it doesn't appear that you can you got to use the actual atmosphere even though you don't really take off your suit I'm going to the wrong side cold and tired 
can't move fast. <laughs> I'll go ahead and close it up and take a nap. Let's see if it lets me. So it's 23. I'll take a nap till 6 o'clock. And gives me a cool little animation. 6 o'clock appears to be the wake up time when solar starts working again. Alright. We are hungry and thirsty and need oxygen, but we are well rested. So let's take a look at our battery real quick, see if we made it through the night. And it looks like we did. It's not getting any power in yet. Batteries haven't warmed up from the oxygen, but there's still a little bit of capacity left, so we didn't run out of power. Yay! This is now getting 96 in, so it's putting out again what it charges up to. So until this thing charges up to 95, um, it's not going to output 95. Alright, that's going to charge up for the sandstorm, which will be before tomorrow night. While I'm out here, I'm going to go ahead and grab some drink out of here. Come here. There we go. All right, that pretty much take care. It takes care of all of our stuff outside. Let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and get some oxygen here. on now that we've got power coming in close that up just get a bite to eat and let's check on our plants alrighty uh, that circle around it seems to be its health if they run out of food or water that bar around the outside goes down and then on the bottom left you can see the potato, potato seedling grow um, percentage I'm not exactly sure when to take it out and put it into the shelf uh, that tutorial said it takes 12 hours and I think we put it in there at about 9 p.m. so about 50 percent is when I've been switching it out so give a quick tour of the rest of this base here while that's working. It's pretty cool, pretty pretty scenic uh, area here. Right now, all there is is a bed. I, mean, I assume you'll be able to add other modules in here later, but you can sleep there as well if you've got a if you've got enough power and everything. Got one other hallway over here. A couple doors. Got like a bedroom slash office type of deal here. <clears throat> and bathroom. With a cool little window. All of the Martians will be able to watch you taking a shower. <laughs> And for time's sake, uh, I'm going to probably cut out the rest of this just to uh, wait until we get these potatoes ready to transfer over. Uh, they're at 33%, so I can make this a quick tutorial video and not linger too long. But I will uh, hopefully work that out in editing and see you guys in a minute. Alright, so while I was waiting, <clears throat> I actually built a couple more batteries, hooked them up in a chain, just so I have some more time play around with in case the uh, plants are taking too long to grow uh, just move those 
in the chain, adjusted everything, and uh, re-ran the cable to the hab there. Um, so you notice I, I kind of unplugged uh, some more of the leads there. Uh, I just needed more cable instead of printing some more. Um, if you just put these down here and then uh, left click on them and hold, it picks up the cable. Um, I don't need to charge up the rover anymore because I'm not gonna not gonna get back in it in this this demo here. Uh, so I can just roll up that cable again. Got that one unplugged as well. One other thing to look at here um, on your little side computer here under map. There's this electricity panel. Uh, if we zoom in here, can go the opposite way on the scroll panel. You'd think um, you can kind of see which buildings are powered here and which are not. Um, even additionally, so I've got our uh, our three, four batteries here. If you click on them, it actually says what the current charge is on them. So you can see this one is 144, 180, so on and so forth. <clears throat> you can actually check on that from anywhere. So it's kind of handy if you're inside. You kind of want to see what your power is doing and, and see what's going on here. You can kind of take a look at that uh, from, from anywhere, I assume. Uh, at least from inside the hab. I know that works just fine. So we can go ahead and check on the plants. Don't think they'll be done yet, but we might be able to move them. So we'll hop back in here. It might actually be damaged because I had to unplug. Yeah, I see that little teeny bit missing. Oh, well, it went away. It was there for a second. They actually, I guess, repair. But it was damaged just a little bit. Um, alrighty. At 45%, I think we are good to go. Now, I found two ways to move these. Um, both are kind of a pain, but if you single click on them, it picks it up, and you can just go ahead and move them on over. Um, I found if you actually click and hold, it puts them in your inventory, so you could grab a few of them. The problem therein lies, you have to now drag them each over to your inventory, pop out, press the number, and then put it on there. I guess if you're transferring them for a long distance, that would be helpful, but they don't stack. So without that ability, this is way too tedious, at least for being right next to each other. So for the rest of these, I'm just going to grab them and move them over. Alrighty, now that we got that bed actually on, we need to supply power and water to it. You can see again here with the demand, it says what you need and you have to meet that. Uh, water, 3.6. So we'll go ahead and do 3.6. I assume because there's less plants in there, they require less water over here so we can tone that down. I'm not really sure what not toning it down does, but hey, we'll go ahead and do that. Same amount of power, makes sense. LEDs, we'll close that back up. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show too while I'm here, um, on this left area here, uh, it says how much the entire base is using. So you see that 28.85, that's what the entire hab is using. Obviously, if you remember, we set the output of that battery to 30, so it's got 30, which means that it is actually charging up. Um, Boom, sandstorm. Sandstorm's coming. You get like an hour warning. It says you don't have enough resources to survive it. Better finish the task list and escape before it reaches you. You don't actually escape. You just finish the task list. Uh, during sandstorm, so powers don't generate power. Yep. Makes sense. Okay. Again, um, just going back up to here. So this is actually charging up the battery a little bit. You can see it just went from 172 to 180. So I'm... I... I believe that the hab actually has a built-in battery itself uh, that's what it's talking about uh, I'm not really sure if that's reflecting the battery on the other end or maybe a battery built in the hab not sure uh, again water here this is built up uh, has a, quite a bit of water I believe since these things are only taking like 0.8 3.6 water I imagine that would last a while if you hear sandstorms coming yay so, if we were outside, we would be seeing that. I, I don't know if there's something that triggers. I read something that the sandstorm is 45 minutes of gameplay. Um, 
obviously with the tutorial I was going a little bit slower than I normally would but I can't shave off too much more time so if you're able to get the plants grown before that you are impressive um, I did move those over here so now it'll go past 50 uh, so got a little ways to go though as you can see normally I'll end up sleeping again uh, the sandstorm I think in this demova immersion is endless so I will get no more power so even if I don't meet this last task list I will eventually die because I won't have power water electricity so on and so forth um, now that the power has been on for a while you should start to see the interior O2 go up it's not cold yet time so I'm go out and take a look at the sandstorm move a little bit slower in it take a look at the batteries This is probably shut off. No, it's still on. I guess it stores a little bit of uh, water in that tank there. Come here. Oh, yeah. Where'd it go? Oh, yeah, there we go. See, air needs power. So it's not powered, but... I guess it's storing a little bit of water in there, and that's why I was able to fill up my suit. And we are at 51%. Alright, I will come back when those are finished. Alrighty, I just woke up from a little nap. Hopefully, we are finished. Yes, we do have a notice. The plants are ready for harvest. Let's see where my battery is at, just for fun. Ugh, one battery left. 71% charge. And you can see they are fully grown at 100%. Alright. So this is our last mission. We get to say goodbye to the demo. Hopefully the full version will be out soon. Well guys, thank you so much for bearing with me on my first uh, YouTube try here. Uh, hopefully this won't be my last one. And please feel free to give me any questions, comments, concerns. And until uh, next time, I'll see you later. Thanks.